Too many announcements tonight of any great importance. Thank you. <laughs> um, of great importance, yes, on Tuesday we'll be having a stall at the Neighbourhood Centre Open Day and Expo and um, we'll be planning to set up at 9 o'clock to start at 10 where it goes from 10 to 1. And I think they'll be putting on barbecue and stuff there. Yeah, there'll be stalls and be barbecue. And I don't want to stuff. stand alone, so come and stand so, with me. Yeah, I'll be there with Michael, yeah. so come and join us and help us. And we'd love to see you. Wednesday, um, we had a great um, Wednesday last week. We took up 10 baskets from Rivers and um, we ended up using 12. We filled 12 because uh, we had stuff that was there in the box that you bring and we had some stuff over. So isn't that wonderful yeah. that we could do that right. and touch the lives of 12 people uh, who had that need. So um, there was those two announcements and also um, Rhonda's bought some goodies at the back there. I think there's some um, passion fruit and some bananas and chocos, all sorts of stuff. So if you'd like to see those go today, so don't forget to help yourself. Thanks, Michael. Mm. Oh, no Bible study on Monday, if I haven't told you. Okay, thanks. And will there be a short prayer time after church today? And a prayer time. Prayer mm. focus. Yeah. Oh, there will be. In John's absence, we'll, we'll still pray. That's great. That's good. Well, let me pray as we come uh, to share around the word today. Uh, if you are here on Mother's Day, I spoke on Lot's wife because there's lots to be said about her. Yeah, yeah. uh, yes, that still gets in. Yeah. Yeah, so. so I'm, I'm doing a, a sort of a mini series of different people hiding in the Bible that you may never have heard a sermon about. But guess what? If you are here at Living Hope, you will. And you can say one day, oh, I heard a sermon about him or her. And so. Uh, this week and then next week there will be another character. So let me pray. Father God, as we just come and open your word this morning, may you encourage us and inspire us from people hiding in the Bible. They may only get one sentence, they may only get a few words, they may only be mentioned by name, but Father God, we can learn some great principles from them as we be your Chris, as we uh, be your disciples and followers here in this place and beyond these walls. And so, Lord, today, uh, bless this message, bless what we have to say, and thank you, Lord, that you are here and that you can speak to us along the roads of life. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. So this morning we're looking at Abishai. Yes, you have no idea who he is, uh, but you'll find him in Samuel uh, 26, and we'll get to him in, in a little bit. So there's lots of characters hiding in the Bible. Um, we might not hear much about them. They might only get a few lines or a few sentences. But from their stories, we can gain some great encouragement, some great insight how to live as Christian men and women today. And Abishai is one such person. Uh, and the question I'm posing this morning is, are you a follower or are you a leader? How does that work in your life? It's 1 Samuel chapter 26, we meet this uh, great soldier, uh, this servant, this guy who supported David, uh, it's 1 Samuel 26, 5 to 12 in the Old Testament. Then David set out and went to the place where Saul had camped. He saw where Saul and Abison of Ner, the commander of the army, had lain down. Saul was lying inside the camp with the army encamped around him. David then asked Hamimelech, now I've been practicing him, the Hittite, and Abishai, the son of Zariah, Joab's brother, who will go down with me into the camp, with me to Saul? I'll go with you, said Abishai. So David and Abishai went down to the army by night, and there was Saul lying asleep inside the camp with his spear stuck in the ground near his head. Abner the so and the soldiers were lying around him. Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered your enemy into your hands. Now let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of my spear. I won't strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, 
The Lord himself will strike him, or his time will come and he will die, or he'll go into battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spear and the water jug that are near his hand, and let's go. So David took the spear and water jug near Saul's head, and they left. No one saw or knew about it, nor did anyone wake up. They were all sleeping, because the Lord had put them into a deep sleep. So here we have Abishai. He was an excellent soldier. He was committed to David. He was loyal. He was passionate. He was skillful. He was strong. He was effective. He was teachable. He was willing to follow and go down into Saul's car, camp, risking his life possibly. He was willing to take a risk. He's passionate. He's committed. But maybe with this passion came a bit of a, bit of a lack of self-control. He needed to remember to engage his brain before he acted. We read that, so David took the spear and the water jug. It was near Saul's head. They left. No one knew about it. No one woke up. Basically, David was saying, hey, Saul, I could have killed you. I took the spear that was near your head. I took your water jug if you were thirsty in the night, as we all are. I could have ended your life, but I chose not to lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. And Abishai was ready with his spear, but no. As followers of Jesus, we can be encouraged by this man's loyalty, by his passion, and by his commitment. Are you a follower or a leader? Some of us will naturally follow, some of us will naturally lead. And as a church community, we need to consider, is anyone following? Who's coming along the road with us? Who are we taking with us? Who are we inspiring? Who are we encouraging? Who are we sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with? Who are we connecting along the roads of life? Who are we meeting? Who are we welcoming as they come through our doors on a Sunday morning? Who is God bringing along? that we need to connect with, that we need to encourage, that we need to inspire and equip. Who's God sending our way who need to hear the message of hope and salvation? Image and reputation is what others think you are, but character is what you really are. Character is who you are in the dark. We must all come and contribute to the life and work of this church. God is calling us, God is calling me to minister, to shepherd, to inspire, to equip, to encourage, to care, to engage, to share, to help, to have a word of hope and compassion. Jesus said in John chapter 10, it's up there on the screen for you. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Jesus says to us, I am the good shepherd. Let the Lord Jesus Christ guide and shepherd your life. And let us then shepherd those that we come across. Outside these walls, people need positive role models. People of substance, people of integrity, people of hope. Let's not let them down. Abishai had a good role model in David. And he followed his orders. We read in verse 8 and 9 of 1 Samuel 26. Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered your enemy into your hands. He's right there. Asleep, come on. Now let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of my spear. I won't strike him twice. Basically, I won't need two guys at it. But David said to Abishai, 
Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As we live out our lives, we have a great influence on people around us. It can be good, it can be bad. But be encouraged, like Abishai. Act with wisdom. Listen to those people God has put around you and placed around you. Those people that speak into your life, listen to them. Dare to dream. Dare to have a go. Let's step out of that boat and walk on the water. For God delights in seeing us triumph and overcoming obstacles. He wrote the book on making the impossible possible. We heard from Rob last week. The impossible possible. The storm was quiet and all was calm. Give God your fear. Give Him your anxiety. Give Him your concerns. Let Him make the impossible possible. Friends, teenage boys don't normally have showdowns with giants. As David stood there as a teenage boy and took rocks and a sling and defeated the giant, so too we can defeat the giants in our life with what we hold in our hands. As a church community, let us continue to have the attitude of believing in one another. Believe in each other, encourage each other, journey together and make a difference here in this place. As we all contribute to the life and work, the mission, the ministry, the vision, the opportunities that God brings our way here in this place and across our community. Let's impact people for God. One of David's great contributions was the way he helped others succeed. He provided opportunity for those following him to use their initiative. <coughs> a gentleman hopped into a taxi. As they were driving along through the streets, the, the passenger reached forward and, and tapped the taxi driver on the shoulder to ask him a question. The taxi driver screams in horror, loses control of the car, nearly hits a bus, jumps the curb and comes to a screaming halt, smashing into the window of a store. Everything's quiet. And then the driver said, Look, mate, don't ever do that again. You scared the absolute living daylights out of me. And the passenger said, I'm sorry, all I did was tap you on the shoulder. And the taxi driver said, Well, I used to drive a hearse for 25 years, and this is my first day driving a taxi. You scared me half to death. <laughs> yes, you'll get it when you get home. <laughs> if you are a follower, follow well. If you are a leader, lead well and care for those that are following you. <clears throat> was Jesus a great leader? Yes, he was. Great leaders lead from the inside out. Jesus focused on personal leadership first. At the core of his character was integrity. Without integrity, no one will follow you. And if no one is following you, then you're not leading, are you? Leadership is truly an inside job. Your leadership skills will take, will take you only as far as your character will allow. Jesus had a pure heart, an unfailing character, let us be followers of him. Follow his word. Follow his example. Follow his life. Great 
great leaders, were great storytellers, and Jesus certainly knew that. He loved to tell a story. He loved to tell a parable. Stories are, are rich and powerful and long-lasting. Use your own story to have an influence around, of those who are around you. Every story can have a message. Every story can point to the one that we are serving. We can turn our stories into tools that build up and help people around us. Great leaders are great servants. Jesus washed the disciples' feet, if you remember, even during the most hardest and trying of times. He gave of himself. Great Christian leaders today, Give of themselves. Serving people, teams, communities, churches, equipping, encouraging, coaching. As we see one another reach their full potential. Leadership. Is about encouraging one another to reach their full potential. Let's motivate. Let's pray. Let us get alongside. Let us persevere. Let us be passionate about the call of God upon our lives. Remember, you don't have to be great to make a start, but start. Let us lead well. Let us follow well. Let us care well. For God has all called us to make a contribution here. I love this picture in Acts chapter 2. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all people. That is my prayer. That people will enjoy our favour and the Lord added to them daily, <coughs> added to their number daily those who were being saved. That is our hope, and that is our prayer. That the Lord will add to our number daily those who are being saved. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you. May we be encouraged by Abishai, this passionate, energetic soldier, Lord. But he knew when to follow, he knew when to listen, he knew when to take instruction. And Lord, let us be like that. Thank you for the characters that you've placed in, in your word, Lord. May we be people of vision. May we be people of perseverance. May we be people of passion. Lord, bless all we do here in this place. Lord, as we connect with people throughout this week, may we have, make a difference for them. May we have a positive message. As we hand out food, as we share, as we study your word, as we pray, as we go about our work in our homes and in our jobs and in the schools, and Father, we thank you that we can make a difference for you as we share the living hope we have in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Please enjoy some morning tea and some fellowship together, and then we'll have a, a prayer time.